our topic of discussion for today is occipital posterior position if this is a gynecoid pelvis with this being the sacrum pubic symphysis this being our ischial level of ischial spine sacroiliac joint and ilio pubic eminence this is our right and this is our left what is occipital posterior position if the position of our fetal head is such that the occiput of the fetal head comes to lie along one of the sacroiliac joints then we call it as occipital posterior position the engaging diameter for occipital posterior position will be sub occipital frontal diameter and since our occiput is in this position and sinciput is along one of the ilio uh, pubic eminence the engaging diameter will lie along one of the oblique diameters so if it is the right occipital posterior position then the engaging diameter will be a right oblique diameter and if it is a left occipital posterior position then your engaging diameter will be a left oblique diameter in this video we will focus more on the changes in the head that will occur in case of occipital posterior position firstly there are four possibilities the first possibility is your dummy uh, this is your schematic diagram sacroiliac this is our occiput now in a well flexed head what will occur if this is my occiput and this is my sinciput in a well flexed head the occiput will hit the pelvic floor first than the sinciput the funda in this is that whichever part hits the pelvic floor first has to rotate such that it will lie behind the pubic symphysis now if the occiput okay so if the occiput hits the pelvic floor first then it will rotate uh, my pubic symphysis is in this direction this will hit the pelvic floor first then it has to rotate such that the occiput comes to lie behind the pubic symphysis so the occiput hitting it first hitting the pelvic floor first will have to rotate such a huge angle so that it comes to lie exactly behind the pubic symphysis that is this is my occiput this is my pubic symphysis so the engaging diameter after rotation will lie along the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvis now since we consider from uh, sacroiliac joint to this ischial spine as 1/8 from here to here is another 1/8 from here to here is another 1/8 since it has to undergo 3/8 of a circle rotation we call this as long anterior rotation once this occurs this will deliver just like occipital anterior this is one possibility always remember for this condition for this to occur this occurs in 90% of the cases for this to occur the fetal head should be well flexed attitude should have a well flexed attitude second possibility if there is slight deflection of the head then what will happen consider this your pelvis initially this is your position if this is the case in slight deflection this one your occiput will hit it first but because there is slight deflection all the contraction of the uterus power will not transmit through the fetal axis therefore the uh, the fetal head can rotate only by this much that is 1/8 of a circle and then it will come to lie in this diameter 
that is the sagittal suture of the fetal skull will lie along the interspinous diameter this will not progress any much further in the uh, labor and we call this as deep transverse arrest the next possibility if there is moderate deflection in case of a moderate deflection of the head the occiput and the sinciput will hit the pelvic floor at the same time and because they are hitting at the same time one of the points will not act as a fulcrum and therefore there will be no rotation we call this as oblique posterior arrest one more possibility if there is severe deflection then what will happen is that your occiput will not hit the pelvic floor first sinciput occiput occiput at a higher level sinciput at a lower level sinciput will hit your pelvic floor first therefore as the funda goes whichever hits the pelvic floor first has to turn such that it comes to lie behind the pubic symphysis so the rotation will occur like this the sinciput will rotate in this direction and what position you get after this is occiput lying with respect to sacrum and your sinciput is lying with respect to your pubic symphysis and this will deliver by face to pubis mechanism so these are the four possibilities that can occur with an occipito posterior position these changes occur at the fetal head among this long anterior rotation occurs in favorable conditions favorable uterine contractions and a favorable pelvis it occurs in 90% of the conditions the other parts are uh, rare and all of them they don't progress with delivery of the fetus except the face to pubis mechanism but face to pubis mechanism there is very high chance of trauma to the maternal genitalia so that's it for this video we'll focus on the other uh, positions later thank you for watching